No matter how sinister the bad guy at the beginning seems, they never seem to have anything on the bad guy behind the bad guy. Where the first bad guy might seem ruthless and ever-present, the bad guy behind the bad guy is calculating and in control. In Episode 7 of Disney Plus's maiden Star Wars series The Mandalorian, we just got to meet the bad guy behind the client, Moff Gideon, and he hasn't disappointed. Let's take a look at why the Moff who shops off the Darth Vader rack is so important. What a difference a reveal makes. For six episodes, we've been watching the stoic Mandalorian work his way across space hiring out his skills while dodging his former guildmates. He's dodging his former guildmates because he took back a bounty because it was just too adorable to let go. Well, that's not the real reason, but close enough. That bounty is known as the child in the show, but to the rest of us, it's become Baby Yoda, or the internet's new reason to exist, because it's just so darn adorable. While you and I know that the child is a young version of whatever Yoda is, and that so far in Star Wars lore there have only been two of whatever Yoda is, no one else in the series seems to be making the connection to the grammatically distinct Jedi Master. Someone knows how significant the child is though, and it turns out it's not really the client. The client was just the sub-boss to the real boss, Moff Gideon. Like a proper villain, Moff Gideon knows how to make an entrance. After seeing a ragtag collection of stormtrooper remnants milling about the frontier town of Navarro with dirty armor and a kinda lazy demeanor, Gideon revealed his A-team with a small squad of death troopers and a few units of stormtroopers with spit polish and precision still intact. Then to top it all off, he makes his personal entrance in the latest of Imperial Rides, the Outland TIE Fighter. As if being Giancarlo Esposito wasn't enough, the guy who played Gus Fring on Breaking Bad is just the right kind of person to play the villain who's going to think he's the hero. He has resting, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed face. Who is this man who cut down the sub-boss, the man pulling the strings this entire time, and what does he want with the child? Well, we have a few clues both from the show and from Esposito himself to go on. First off, we can gather a lot from his name. Well, not his name so much as his title. Gideon is a Moff, the title given to the regional governors of the Empire who were given control after Emperor Palpatine dissolved the Senate. If regional governors sounds like a bureaucratic pencil-pushing position, let's think back to when it all started in Star Wars A New Hope. Darth Vader may have the cool suit and the dark side of the force and even the main showdown with both Ben Kenobi and Luke Skywalker, but during the whole thing there was someone just as calculating and perhaps even colder holding his leash. That man was Grand Moff Tarkin, played by the also stern-faced Peter Cushing. They must teach withering stare at Moff School. As much of an iconic villain as Darth Vader is, no one was fighting to find the goodness in Grand Moff Tarkin. Darth Vader force choked some underlings and flew in a dogfight. Grand Moff Tarkin gave the order to destroy destroy Alderaan just to make a point, and that's after he convinced Leia to give up the rebel base in order to save it. If the head Moff is anything to go by, Moffs are nothing to mess around with. Moffs became an interesting prospect in the setting of the Mandalorian. As we know by now, the Mandalorian takes place a little while after the Battle of Endor and the fall of the Galactic Empire. We also know that not everything was peace, joy, and pancakes once the Empire fell. By the time of The Force Awakens, a new threat has taken up the vacuum of power left by the Empire in the form of the new Order, who at the very least has a similar fashion sense. The First Order, thanks in part to a return to the classics with Starkiller Base, is able to wrestle control back before the New Republic is able to, leaving a new group of galactic heroes to seek out the last group and save the galaxy again. But that's the story playing out in the theaters now. Back in the world of the Mandalorian, the Empire is in the past and the First Order is at best the twinkle in someone's imperial eye. Moff Gideon fits somewhere in that spectrum. Part of what we know about Gideon and his his importance to both the Mandalorian and perhaps the whole of the Star Wars timeline comes from Esposito himself. The character of Moff Gideon has been teased before the show even aired, with Esposito talking about his character and what he sees for him. Speaking to Slash Film at an event for his other role as the antagonist in Godfather of Harlem, Esposito was able to give a tease about what his character might be, even if at the time it couldn't be revealed if the character would look like Esposito or if it would look like Nick Nolte's Quill. At the event, he said what to expect from the character in the usually 
cryptic way actors have to be in the age of big franchises, saying in a way you might call him an underworld character. You may also look at him as a savior, as someone who might bring back some order to the world after it's all collapsed. Well, he brought order alright, but he brought it in a distinctly imperial fashion. That includes his particular lack of patience with his underling failing him. It had been a rough road for the client. First, he was able to obtain the child by employing all the bounty hunters. Then, he lost the child to the same bounty hunter. Bounty hunting is a peculiar profession after all. Shortly after revealing to the client that the Hover Prime doesn't contain the child, he gave the order to shoot up the cantina, putting an end to the client. We met the new boss. No need for the old boss anymore. We all want to get to the boss behind the boss. That way is to hit that subscribe button and then ring that notification bell. With two clicks, all the latest CBR videos show up in your inbox. If you're on a mobile device, and who isn't, make sure to head over to the settings and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when the latest videos are ready. Now you're the boss behind the boss behind the boss. Boss? So Esposito sees Gideon as an underworld character, but also one who brings order. But now that we've seen seven episodes of the eight episode first season, what does that mean? We know from what the characters say and what the Mandalorian has shown that after the collapse of the Empire, there has been a bit of chaos in the galaxy far, far away. By dissolving the Senate and placing the regional governors in charge, the Moffs, the Empire has set up a system that doesn't collapse that easily. Certainly without the support of the Empire and the threat of the Death Star, the Moffs can lose some of their ability to control their territories, or in fact, their willingness to. But what if a Moff doesn't want to give up control? On the outer edges of the Galactic Empire, where even the Republic had a hard time exerting its influence, the Moffs would operate with an extra dose of autonomy. It also stands to reason that the rulers of these unruly lands would have to have an approach to power that embraces the gray areas. Moff Gideon is one who is clearly not ready to hand over his power. While the rest of the galaxy that hasn't rejoined the New Republic has fallen under the influence of warlords, Gideon still goes by Moff. He has hasn't given up his imperial title. His mediary, the client, even pays for the bounty on the child with imperial currency and material. In the seventh episode, we get the client's point of view regarding the end of the empire and perhaps the view of his boss as well. The client expresses his frustration at the Mandalorian for causing the unrest to begin with, and even goes so far as to refer to Mandalore's resistance to imperial rule that resulted in the siege of Mandalore done to the Old Republic as it was making the switch from Republic to Empire. Under Sabine Wren, the remaining Mandalorians resisted imperial rule over the course of both the Clone Wars and Rebels animated series. This is something that's still a sore spot for the client. You can see the client's philosophy and likely that of his boss in what he asks rhetorically of Mando and Grief. While expressing his frustration, the client says, it is good to restore the natural order of things after a period of such disarray, don't you agree? It does help that the client is played by legendary director Werner Herzog, who says everything as if it was part of a negotiation for your soul. According to the client, the collapse of the Empire has not been a net positive. Warlords are taking over. Places like Navarro are overrun with criminals. It is exactly the kind of thing that proud Moff wouldn't tolerate in his region. Cara Dune mentions that Navarro remained in Imperial control all the way to the end, indicating that Moff Tarkin was also able to retain control and shore up his resources. We know that the First Order gathered in the unknown parts of the galaxy to shore up its strength to challenge the New Republic and build up its new armada. The fringe area like Navarro would have had to have been a key part of that strategy. When Gideon shows up with his shiny suited death troopers, a transport full of stormtroopers, and his fancy TIE fighter, he doesn't look like a warlord living on what's left. He is every bit the spit and polish imperial official we've come to know and dread, right down to the cape. There are a few other clues as to what Moff Gideon is up to and his importance to not only the Mandalorian, but to Star Wars in general. First one comes in the form of his call to the client. The client relays the rather shaky excuse Grief gave as to why the pram was closed, but it's not something that Moff Gideon buys. He knows that pram is empty and orders his death troopers to open fire on the tavern. There are two ways for him to have known that. There's the regular supervillain way that knows that our intrepid heroes wouldn't surrender so easily and obviously after all the trouble to secure the child in the first place, they wouldn't just have the child in the pram ready to just hand it back over. Being one step ahead is a long-standing hallmark of the master villain. The other theory is that Moff Gideon is Force-sensitive and was able to feel that the child was not there. That may be a stretch, but there are other things that would indicate that it's a possibility. Obviously, the child is imbued with the Force. It levitated a ram horn and even Force-choked Cara Dune when it didn't understand the nature of arm wrestling. We don't know yet if it's just the species 
species that's particularly in tune with the Force, or if the child really is related to Yoda in some way. We do know from the main series that genetic lines can pass down a heightened sensitivity to the Force with the Skywalkers producing three generations of famous Force users. But can Gideon detect that? He obviously knows more than anyone else involved, and, like a true quality bad guy, lets everyone know that they don't know what they're dealing with. The other hint that maybe Gideon is dealing in issues of the Force comes from his fashion choices, which lean a little on the Darth Vader side. Vader, of course, got his signature look after a showdown with his former master by a river of lava didn't go his way. But after being the Emperor's face of the Sith in the Empire, there might be more than just the suggestion that Moff Gideon doesn't think the Force is an ancient superstition. Of course, it might also hint at what Gideon's rise to power involved, as his armor was also reminiscent of the Death Troopers that shot up the tavern. It could very well be that Moff Gideon rose through the ranks as a Death Trooper and, being the last holdout of the Empire even after their capitulation to Jakku, with one more episode to go in the first season and the second season already in production, we'll know for sure soon enough. And that's what we know about Moff Gideon so far. What's his role going to be going forward? Let us know in the comments. But watch out for those spoilers if you've already seen Rise of Skywalker and feel like tying the two together. Also, be your own boss by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so that you can get the latest videos in your inbox. Thanks for watching.